Good day, future engineers. Perhaps you're getting busier this time with all your subjects, but I hope you're still doing well with your studies. For today, let's talk about force resolution. With today's lecture, we aim to review your knowledge about trigonometry, apply that knowledge in resolving forces into its oblique and rectangular components, solve for the resultant of several forces, and lastly, add the forces by using rectangular component method. Now, let's have a short recap. Previously, we learned that you can get a single force that can represent the given forces known as the resultant force. Also, you became familiar with the first two methods of vector addition. Later on in this lecture, we will focus on this third method, the rectangular component method. For now, let's go through with the concept of force resolution. What we did last lecture is known as the composition of forces. Recall that by parallelogram law and triangle law, we were able to solve the resultant of two given forces. This time, we will do the opposite. The given now will be a single force and we will break it into its components. This inverted process is known as force resolution. Let's take this example from the previous lecture. Last time, this particle was acted by two given forces, which were later on combined to get this resultant. If we are going to resolve the single force, then we must look for ways to bring back these two given forces. But is this the only possible number of components that we can resolve from the given resultant force? To help you answer that, consider this another example. With this given resultant, what do you think its components look like after force resolution? Actually, this resultant force can possibly be resolved into these four components. Therefore, a single force can be resolved into several components. To add, on, to add on that idea, let's have a third example coming from this first example. In this figure, you can see the force components after conducting a force resolution. However, take note that even these force components can also be resolved into their corresponding components. Thus, a single force can be resolved into an infinite number of possible sets and orientations of components. There are two ways which we can solve for the force components. First is by resolving its oblique components and second is by resolving its rectangular components. Let's deal first with oblique components. In mathematics, oblique angle is an angle, either acute or obvious, that is not a right angle or a multiple of a right angle. To visualize, consider these three equal resultant forces, in where you can draw different orientations of its two oblique components. All these force components are considered oblique components since the included angle between them are either acute or obtuse angle. Observe here that you can apply the, the drawing procedure from parallelogram law to approximate the sketch of the possible of the components. One last thing before we proceed to the problem solving, let's quickly review the basic trigonometric functions by considering this triangle. During your trigo class, you might have encountered Sokatoa, 
in where the first letters S, C, and T stands for sine, cosine, and tangent respectively. With respect to any acute angle, O stands for the opposite, A for adjacent side, and H for hypotenuse. First, for the sine function, so means sine of an angle is equal to opposite side over hypotenuse. In this right triangle, let's consider this angle A. Therefore, we have here sine of angle A is equal to side A over side C. Or in some problems, this formula is more convenient to use in where you will multiply the hypotenuse by the sine of any of the two acute angles to get the corresponding opposite side. Similarly, for the cosine function, we make use of ka. So in this triangle, cosine of angle A is equal to side B over side C. Or can be manipulated into the into its this following form. Lastly, for tangent, we make use of TOA, which means that based on the given triangle, tangent of angle A is equal to side A over side B, which can also be expressed into this form. Also recall that cosecant, secant, and cotangent are functions that are reciprocal of sine, cosine, and tangent functions respectively. Now, let's solve a sample problem about oblique components. Based on the figure, resolve the 100 Newton force acting on a particle 30 degrees counterclockwise from the reference into two components, along horizontal and along 120 degrees counterclockwise from the reference. First, let's, let's write what is required. We let force P to be the unknown force component along horizontal and force Q to be the unknown force component along 120 degrees counterclockwise from the reference. To resolve the given single force, let's first apply parallelogram law. From this figure, the required force components are drawn by making sure that a parallelogram shape is formed. To get the angle opposite of the given force, we apply again trigonometry to conclude that this angle is equal to this angle. Knowing about supplementary angles, we can compute that this is 60 degrees so that the total of these two angles is 180 degrees. This also follows that this angle is equal to 60 degrees. You may notice that if we apply the cosine law for this triangle, we will have an equation with two unknowns, namely force P and force Q, which will require us to find another equation to satisfy the two unknowns. Finding the second equation by this method and solving those two equations simultaneously can be quite a lengthy process. So I will show here other alternatives that can save you some time in solving this problem. Our first alternative is by finding geometrical relationships between the given and the unknowns. Let's start first by focusing on the geometry along the horizontal. To do that, let's create this line perpendicular to the reference axis. What we will do here is express the horizontal projection of the given 100 Newton force and, and of the force Q. First, by referring to this triangle, the length of its horizontal leg can be represented by this green line. 
using the trigonometric functions, we can express this length as 100 times cosine of 30 degrees. Similarly, for this little triangle, we can express the length of its horizontal leg as 4 skew times cosine of 60 degrees. With this figure and these horizontal dimensions, we can now establish the first relationship along horizontal, which is magnitude of force P is equal to this obtained horizontal dimensions. Or can be written as follows. By simplifying this equation, we get the following. And we denote that as the first equation. Next, let us now focus on the geometry along the vertical. For this, for these two right triangles, it can be observed that they share a common side. And let's denote that as H. By using the sine function, we can conclude that H is equal to 100 times sine of 30 degrees for this triangle. Also, H is equal to force Q times sine of 60 degrees for this little triangle. With these vertical dimensions, we can now establish the relationship along the vertical by equating these two equations for H. Solving for the magnitude of force Q, we get 57.74 newtons with this direction 60 degrees from the horizontal. To solve for the magnitude of force P, force P Let's substitute the magnitude of force Q into equation 1. So by simplification, we can get its magnitude which is equal to 115.47 newtons directed to the left. Another way of solving this problem is by using trigonometry for this whole triangle. By just, ob by just observing its two interior angles, you might be able to figure out now that this angle is equal to 90 degrees. Thus, the whole triangle is also a right triangle. To verify, you may denote this as theta and solve for it by equating the interior angles to 180 degrees. Since this is a right triangle, we can solve it alternatively by writing force P, which is hypotenuse, times cosine of 30 degrees is equal to 100 and the and 100 represents the adjacent side this gives us the same magnitude of force p with the same final answer to get force q we can write 100 times tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the magnitude of force q this gives us the same answer as before Aside from parallelogram law, you can also get the oblique components by triangle rule. By following its procedure of drawing the forces, we can now have this diagram. Take note that this 60 degree angle is not given and was obtained by applying trigonometry. For triangle rule, we commonly apply the sine law. Therefore, let's complete first the interior angles. Previously, we solved for theta as follows and found out that it is a right angle. Now that we have all the interior angles, let's apply sine law 
and write that 100 over sine of 60 degrees is equal to these terms containing the unknowns and divided by the sine of their opposite angle respectively. With these equations, we now obtain the same answers as before. The force resolution into rectangular components will be discussed on the next part of this lecture. So that's it for now. Thank you class and God bless.